Okay, so today I would like to introduction my research. The title is Innovation of New Tool for Circadian Reason, Color Preference and Short-Term Memory Testing in Zebra Fish. I am Professor Xiao from Zhongyuan Christian University. So my lab uh, has a lot of students from international. For example, we have the international from Vietnam, from uh, India, and from Indonesia, also from Pakistan. So we provide full scholarship to young scientists studying in biotechnology, master and PhD program in CYCU. So today I would like to use some example to show you how to use in our innovative tool to study the ecotoxicity of the uh, chemical. For example, this is the carbon-16 fluorine. So carbon-16 fluorine is a carbon-based material. We want to start it as ecotoxicity, so we design uh, the acute toxicity testing as mean from day zero to day four, and also started their subchronic or chronic toxicity from day five to day 12. And after uh, incubation for the uh, long term, we just sacrifice the fish to do the ELISA. But before a sacrificed fish, we were testing a lot of different uh, behavior endpoints. For example, we testing for their locomotion, for their uh, aggression, or predator avoidance uh, testing. Um, the other day, we can test in the uh, showing or the social interaction or the circadian reason or the memory. So today, I would like to introduce three different uh, interesting uh, tools we just recently publication. The first one is called the circadian reason. The circadian reasons mean the day and night activity of the animal. For example, the zebrafish is the typical uh, animal active in the day, but they will take a break. Uh, in the night, but another like the catfish, they are very active in the night. So this is the we call the circadian reason. And second one, we want to start it for the short term memory. We develop a tool called T mask. So this T mask can test in the short term memory of the fish. And third one is the color preference setting, like this one. We can use in the four container. Each container have different color combination and also supply with the external uh, light to providing uh, enough illumination and using the microscope or the CCD to record in the fish locomotion. Eventually, we are able to uh, study the color preference ranking. The first paper is done by my student, PhD student Gipper. So the title is Establishing a Simple uh, Image-Based Method and a Cost-Effective Instrument for toxicity assessment on circadian reason in regulation in fish. So as you can see here, this is the uh, cartoon to show you the circadian reason for two different fish species. And once we establish the methodology, we would like to start it. The temperature effect, for example, we keep the fish in low or high temperature. Or we started the age effect. We started for the younger or the elder fish what's the differences for the circadian reason. And also study for the environmental pollution, for example, if they polluted by the ethanol, what's going on? So this cartoon, uh, uh, this video show you the circadian reason for the zebra fish. You can see this is in the daytime, the zebra fish is quite uh, aggressive, but the catfish, they are uh, sleeping. But after the night cycle, when the, uh, we turn on the infrared, so you can see the uh, catfish is quite uh, aggressive. But the zebrafish now is uh, behavior like the sleeping. And another day, the zebrafish active again, but catfish sleeping again. So this uh, video show you the two fish, actually their circadian reason basically are different. But the problem is how to record in the circadian reason. Yeah, so we developed some uh, uh, instrument that able to detect the circadian reason. The first we have the chamber. This is called the temperature control chamber. So the purpose is to maintain a consistent temperature at 25 degree, because the circadian reason we believe is temper temperature dependent. And we're using one infrared CCD. So this infrared CCD can detect the fish movement. 
in the tank and also we supply with the uh, LED light box in the bottom so in the day cycle you can see the uh, we have the six container and each container uh, containing three fish and when in the night cycle uh, the, the light already turned off so it's a unable to see the fish but we turn on the LED infrared and because this CCD is infrared sensitive so it's still able to detect the fish uh, movement in the uh, dark uh, condition and also not disturb the fish because the fish cannot detect the infrared 940 nanometer wavelengths so this condition we can monitor the fish uh, activity in the day or either in the night so this is the uh, we call the light strip array to show you the LED for the daylight and also LED bubble for the infrared so this we can uh, switch on off of either of the light source so this tool we can see how good of this tool can start it the zebra fish this video show you the zebra fish in the younger this is around a six months old so their circadian activity is quite normal and in the right panel is the fish a uh, quite old already uh, one year and a half one and a half year so after we recording the video uh, we are doing the trajectory analysis by the image analysis too so after that you can find the zebra fish for the younger is the black color the activity in the day active and later uh, go to the uh, basal level in the night and later in another day they active again but for the elder fish, you can find in the day cycle, there are no differences, but in the night, they are not sleeping very well. So this is uh, very similar to our human being that the elder people sleeping are quite less. And what is the control mechanism for the circadian reason? We can see this picture uh, in the human is mediated by the hormone. In the day cycle, it is mediated by cortisol. And in the night cycle, it's mediated by the, we call the melatonin. So the melatonin can consider as a marker, a biomarker for the circadian reason. And after we started for the LG effect, so later we started for the temperature effect. So here we show you the uh, normal temperature. You can see the fish in 25 degree and this is the low temperature in 80 degree and here is the fish in the high temperature in the 30 degree Celsius so after doing the circadian checking we found the fish in the high temperature or in the low temperature the circadian activity will be changed what is the uh, differences in the low temperature the day activity going down but in the high temperature the day activity going higher but in the night cycle for either of the temperature the activity is the maintained the same so the conclusion is the circadian reason alteration for the temperature only be uh, very significant be found in the day cycle in the night cycle there are no differences and right panel show you the uh, we call the environmental pollution effect this is the control fish this is the uh, acute exposure to 0.1% of the ethanol and here is the chronic uh, 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 exposure to the ethanol for one week so after we do the quantification we found in the low temp in the low concentration here and the high concentration uh, sorry in the low concentration 1.1% uh, of the ethanol acute the behavior is different from the chronic the acute they have the stimulating effect but after chronic they already maybe already adapted they become uh, we call the decline of the uh, locomotion activity so in this consideration the circadian reason they are, are associated with the temperature also associated with the environmental condition so after we establish the methodology we are able to start it 
our uh, carbon fluorine uh, is the carbon 60 fluorine uh, exposure. So we exposure to carbon, uh, carbon 16 at a 2 ppm level. Uh, we detection for the circadian reason we found very interesting. In the either in the day or in the night cycle, the activity going down. So this is the chronology, and here is the quantification. So in the day or in the night, you can see the results going down. And also we started for the uh, Mandarin. The Mandarin is mean the ZZ. So if the Mandarin getting higher, it means the, the fish got anxiety. So they display the ZZ, ZZ behavior. So as you can see here in the night cycle, the fish supposedly should be sleeping in the wild type. But in the carbon foreign, carbon 60 foreign uh, exposure, the fish got high anxiety. So the Mandarin index is getting higher in the night cycle. So later we also use in this methodology to start it, not the environmental issue, but for the mutant, we have one mutant called leptin A. So the leptin A mutant fish got obesity phenotype. So we would like to start it. What is the uh, circadian reason for this obesity fish? So after we testing, we found the obesity fish they in the morning or either in the night cycle, they are always very aggressive. Uh, their locomotion uh, index is quite high. And what is the reason? So we started for the brain melatonin level. We found the melatonin level in the laptop A, KO fish is quite low. So this low level of the melatonin cannot maintain us the good sleeping of the fish. So this is why the fish locomotion index is quite high in the laptop A, KO fish. And second topic is the uh, sec color preference. So this instrument or this invention is innovated by my two students. One is the Peters, the other is the Stephen. Uh, this is the Stephen's master thesis. So this paper already be published, get published to 2020 this year. So the title is the method standardization for conducting uh, in-net color preference started in different zebrafish chain. So we started the color preference ranking in different strand. And this is the setting. We have the uh, infrared camera here. We have four container or four tank. This is to increase in the throughput because if you record in uh, one tank at uh, one time, it's low throughput. So we are able to record in four container one time. So can uh, doubling or double doubling the uh, uh, throughput. And here is a light source to provide in a beta illumination. And later the camera uh, information is just recording in the computer. And later we're using ID checker is the animal locomotion checking tool to do the, uh, the checking. And this is the uh, picture to show you the setting of the uh, color preference testing. So we first are looking for the normal ranking of the uh, color preference in zebra fish. So the result, we just do two color combination. For example, the tank, we have the blue, we have the green color combination. After testing, we found the, the blue color has more preference than the uh, green color. And the red color higher than the blue color. So after this testing, we know in the normal zebra fish color preference ranking is red, higher than blue, and blue higher than green, and green a higher than uh, uh, a green higher than yellow, and finally uh, the, the the yellow color is the last preference color. So what's going on if the fish be polluted by the carbon sixteen? Foreign, and we found their color preference ranking is the same, but their index index is mean the ratio is become a little bit lower compared to the wild type. So in this con con uh, in this consideration, we can conclude the carbon sixty foreign 
uh, did not get any alteration for the color preference ranking, but they have reduction of the color preference index. Index is in here. And we go to another fish called the leptin A. Remember, we already told you this is the obesity fish. After we testing, we found an interesting result. The color preference ranking, you can see the ranking still okay, but the index also getting lower, much lower for each color combination, got very low. So what is the reason to get the low color preference index? So in the same manner, we measure for the serotonin. The serotonin is important, uh, we call the neural transmitter to maintain us the, uh, we call the emotional uh, maintainers. So once the low serotonin in the human or in the rodent already be reported to uh, associate with the depression or the less interesting to the novel object. So you can see in our leptin fish, kale fish, the leptin uh, hormone, uh, sorry, the serotonin hormone in the leptin kale fish is really, really low. So this is the, maybe the reason why the fish got less interesting for the color. And finally, I would like to show you is the another testing is called the memory testing. So we using this memory testing to start it, the zinc chloride. This is done by my students in uh, 2018. Actually, this is a uh, accident uh, finding because the Shurija using the zinc chloride to induction some memory deficient and we found very interesting the zinc chloride can induce a very sharply decline of the short-term memory this is unexpected as we are doing the experiment before we didn't expect it we got this result so the first how we find in this phenomenon we just using the pace avoidance pace avoidance is the shuttle box we have the light uh, area and also the black area. So once you open the gate, so the fish will swim into the uh, black area very uh, faster because this is in the response. They prefer to stay in the dark because they feel it maybe more relaxed. But after they move into the dark area, you just close the gate. Later, you using the electricity to shock the fish, and later we removing the fish and waiting for one day and tomorrow we put the fish into the container in the bright area later we open in the gate the fish already memorized yesterday be shocked by the electricity current so the fish don't want to move into the dark area so this uh, uh, the waiting time we call the latency will become very high you can see here in the uh, wild type for example they were waiting for around uh, 100 to 200 second but in the normal one once you open they didn't change it by the shock they were moving into dark area within maybe one or two seconds but after polluted by the zinc chloride in the very low dose for example 0.1 ppb ppm so you can see the decline of the latency it means their shorter memory already uh, compromised and also get very good dose dependent manner like this one. So the conclusion is the zinc exposure can sharply uh, reduce the short term memory in zebra fish. And what's the reason? So we measurement for the zinc ion content in the brain tissue. We found the brain zinc content get linear, uh, uh, we call the dose dependent increasing manner because the exogenous zinc maybe going to the body and later the uh, accumulation in the brain but not only in the brain in the muscle in the gear or in the liver we also found the dose dependent increasing of the uh, zinc ion in the body so that we know the zinc ion is going to the body and this excess zinc may be inducing some biological or the biochemical alteration so how to measure the biochemical alteration? We developed some ELISA method. We call the ELISA kit. So this kit is using the antibody immobilized into the uh, 96 well blade. 
So later we uh, did some uh, protein, or uh, we call it tissue lysate. We are able to detect the color change. And later we are reading for the OD uh, value that we are able to quantification of the, our target protein. So actually we already developed a lot of the uh, ELISA kit using specific antibody immobilized in the uh, 96 web play. And this will be very in, in, uh, important and also very uh, useful for our study. And here is some example to show how useful of the ELISA kit. For example, we have the acetylcholine esterase. So it's called the ICHE. So the acetylcholine esterase, the acetylcholine esterase, we found their uh, content is dose dependent increasing. But on the contrary, the acetylcholine is the dose dependent decreasing. And as you can see here, for example, like uh, this is the A beta uh, 42, this is the protein marker for Alzheimer's disease. So we found the zinc chloride exposure can elevate the A beta 42 level. And the other is the phosphorylated tau. The tau protein will be uh, elevated in the Alzheimer's disease. So according to this data, we found the zinc chloride exposure fish actually they got a similar symptom to the human Alzheimer's disease, the memory loss, and also elevation of the A beta protein. Later, we developed uh, uh, another tool called the TMS. So why are you two using the TMS to study the memory deficient? Because the previous this avoidance method cannot precisely measurement for the memory and uh, we call the learning and the memory uh, uh, in the zebra fish. So we according to the mouse study, we design one T mass, T arm. So this T mass have two arm and we just uh, put the fish, for example, in the here and later the fish will go to these two arena uh, either in here in the left or in the right. So once they're moving into the left, we open the, uh, maybe open the gate and later give the electricity shock. So once they give the electricity shock, we move in the fish to another external container. So tomorrow we put the fish to here to testing again. So the fish will not go into the here because they already memorized yesterday uh, be punished by this electricity uh, shock. So we use in this one, we can finish the whole training and the testing within three days. So this protocol is very faster compared to the previous protocol. The previous protocol will take around maybe one, one week to 10 days to, uh, for the training, but our uh, electricity based uh, method is only takes three days. So this is the evaded by my PhD student and also the master student. So this is the trajectory of the fish we can see here. This is the fish we, when we open the gate. So the zebra fish will swim into the left because it, in the right, in the right arm, we have the decorated with the green color. So the fish will avoid us of the green color. So they move into uh, another container with, without decorated with the color. And if we, after we are chaining the shock, so another day you put the fish to here, you can see, they prefer go to the, the right container because they still memorize the, and the left container will be shock. But after zinc chloride exposure, so the fish already uh, uh, lost of the memory. So let's still go into the left container. So this can show you the fish already got the short term memory loss. So this is the quantification data, quantification data. So you can find this is the control, the memory before, after the latency very high. So they memorize. And day one, day two, day three, they still memorize. But after exposure to the zinc chloride, so day one, day two, day three, the memory decline faster than the control. Yeah. 
So they got significant differences uh, testing by two-way ANOVA. So this is the conclusion. The zinc chloride exposure, the brain zinc content or the other tissue zinc content getting higher. And also induction of the methylstonin. This is the uh, mental binding protein to chelate the free uh, ion of the zinc. And also in the brain, the ROS level very high, the cortisol stress hormone getting higher, and acetylcholine going down, and acetylcholine esterase getting higher, and a lot of behavior alteration, including the memory loss here, is the very significant decline. And in addition to the, uh, the paper, we also Publish a similar paper using the other chemical called the zinc chloride PbCl2. The result is also similar. You can see the long, the long term but very low dose in the PPB level still able to uh, trigger the memory loss in zebra fish. Here we can see the memory already, already lost. So the conclusion is the uh, heavy mental like the lead chloride or the zinc chloride exposure for the short term or the acute can induce in the memory loss. How about the other chemical like the fluorine carbon 16? The answer is no. After exposure, a lot of behavior going down, decline, compromise, but the behavior still not uh, is kept unaltered. So this result can tell us the memory is not affected by all of the chemical exposure. Like the heavy mental is work, but like the carbon 16, Fluorin, the short-term memory still keep the same, no alteration. And finally, we can combine all of the behavior endpoint, and later with transformation, like the, this is called a, a hierarchy clustering, that we can sort in their behavior according to their similarity. Eventually, we can use in this method to see what's going on for our a fish after exposure to different chemicals. So this approach we call the phenomics approach. So the phenomics approach, this is the, we call the two-dimensional. And later we can also using the principal component analysis, PCA. It's a mathematics uh, method to reduction the data complexity. So later we are able to comparison different chemical uh, phenotype. For example, the carbon-16, carbon-17, I remember, is here. They are quite similar. But their phen phenomics is different from the zinc chloride, and also different from the, uh, we call the organic solvent pollution, like the methanol isopropanol, or like the DMSO. So according to this data, we can see the fingerprinting of the uh, pheno phenomics uh, alteration is totally different. They have the, we call the pollution uh, specific manner. So we can use in this approach to start it, the pollution effect. So we, my student Gebre already using this approach to publish the interesting paper for started the organic solvent, uh, about 10 organic solvent, and to see what's going on for the fish based on their uh, biochemical alteration, also, also based on the behavior alteration. And this paper already got published this year, 2020, in Environmental Pollution Journal. Okay, so I think my talk will stop here. So this is the local meeting for the ecotoxicity this year, 20, uh, late, uh, next year, 2021. Thank you for attention.